I'm David Kraft, Editor-in-Chief of uh, Workboat Magazine, workboat.com, and we're with uh, Aust Austin Golding, who's the president of Golding Barge Line in Vicksburg, Mississippi. And for those who aren't familiar with Austin's company, they have uh, 63 tank barges, all 30,000 barrels. They have about 25 towboats. And um, before this uh, coronavirus outbreak, they uh, were known for moving uh, refined petroleum products, uh, petrochemicals, uh, you know, chemical products and crude oil. So I guess the first question is, how, Austin, how is that mixed? Has, that, has, your, has your mix uh, changed at all from those products? Well, we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot more uh, blend stocks be moved. That's that's probably the biggest change. And and from what I understand, uh, gasoline production and gasoline demand way off. So a lot of uh, supplement products go into that line within the refinery, and a lot of blend stocks are needed to make those supplemental products to kind of keep things moving. Uh, we're also moving a lot of products that go in towards uh, detergent making and and cleaning uh, material chemicals and plastics that are going towards a, a ramp up in production on that. But um, at the same time, I think diesel has seen a little bit of an increase with the amount of freight that's being demand, uh, de demanded to be moved around. Then you got weird things like jet fuel that's being moved all over the place. People have a, uh, a real uh, market advantage, it appears, with some of these jet fuel inventories. So um, I'm not really sure what's driving that beyond a good deal. Um, or maybe some of these cargo planes uh, carrying a lot of the supplies and, and ordering around too. But um, so far, uh, we've been able to stay busy. You know, we're anticipating a slowdown, and we're seeing it in some of our more uh, niche segments uh, rather than the bulk carriers. But um, so far, we've been able to stay busy. And really, almost a bigger concern is keeping our guys healthy, that we have enough people to man every boat uh, and not have an outbreak on a boat. So what you're saying is you really haven't seen any drop in demand or cancellation of long-term contracts or anything like that? Or? No, and, and I think part of the thing that's supplementing that is a storage game. Um, a lot of these folks are looking at our barges as a storage option, and we've had a lot of inquiries from outside parties that aren't really normal operators that are looking for storage options. So, um, you know, that's been a, an interesting dynamic where whatever volume's out there is having to be – coupled with a, a volume of tank barges that have a large section of them being used for floating storage, not A to B transit. So it's kind of a new dynamic. We normally don't have that much storage competing with, with uh, I guess, operating barges. Now that gets to uh, two, uh, two parts of this also. So you, you have not had any confirmed coronavirus positives yet? Uh, not yet. We've had, had, uh, we've had a, a couple uh, testing instances where we've had people feel ill and we've gotten tested um and nothing yet um luckily and you know managing our crew changes is our biggest point of exposure the docs have been really great with us on um working to socially isolate our crews so of the shore tankermen and some of the inspecting companies have been really good with us too We're still working with some of our customers vetting offices to try to come up with solutions that make sense so that the equipment can still be uh, have oversight applied to it without the ex human exposure element, so that's understandable. Um, but yeah, yeah that's what my question was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how have your daily operations changed? You know, work hours, schedules, crews changes. Which so crew changes now. Uh, we're having a lot. You know, we used to kind of parse them out where people would go straight to the boat from their house. Like now, most of the folks are coming through Vicksburg. We do have a couple of couple of people that that's just prohibitive, so we were able to screen them at the boat but we're asking everybody to come to the office for crew change, screening them here, a long list of precautions around how the uh, rental cars are handled and how the uh, crew interface and crew change outs handled. And um, yeah, so it's, it's right now the daily life on the boat, there's, we're asking them to, to practice social distancing. Uh, they're doing as much of that as they can. Um, I think the biggest point of exposure that they feel is getting groceries and supplies on and off the boat. I know they spent a lot of time cleaning the boxes and the things that come on and off the boat. They've been pretty good at, at keeping away from other humans, but uh, interface, they gotta have groceries, you gotta have supplies. Yeah. So uh, trying to coach around that's probably been the, the most uh, anxious, anxious inducing interface that we have. Now, if, if you have to quarantine a vessel or crew, do you have a plan in place? We do. Um, our plan at the moment, uh, includes a, a process to where we get uh, the infected crew member off the boat, 
uh, the myriad of options, depending on where we are, get him or her to a clinic to be tested and then get them on the way home. Um, at that point, the vessel will be quarantined until we get the results back from the test. Um, and at that point, we'll make a decision. If it's positive, we'll get the whole crew off that was on the boat with the person that was affected, have the boat cleaned, get a new crew on and go back to work while that crew that got off is quarantined for 14 days. Uh, as everybody knows now, the testing results don't come back for three to, three to nine days sometimes. Uh, we went ahead and made the call one time already this year just to move ahead with the cleaning and switch the crew out since it was crew change anyway. And uh, the testing results weren't going to come back before that, that boat was due a crew change. So instead of just half the crew getting off, we got the whole crew off, cleaned the boat, got a whole crew on. And luckily, two days later, the results came back negative. So um, we're, we've got some flexibility in our plan to move quicker than getting the results back just because the results are taking so, so darn long to get back. Do you have any uh, estimate of what it would cost? I saw um, – you might you probably saw the article in Reuters uh, – you know, Canal Barge's, Barge's chief, Merritt Lane, said that um, if they had to quarantine the crew, clean the vessel, and mobilize another crew, he said it could run forty to 50000 per day in costs. Uh, you know, it's one thing to think about, you know, uh, I, could, I could easily see that for Canal, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, our, our, our business model is a little more dedicated unit tow. They're more line haul, oh, right. bigger boats. But they yep. do have, they do have uh, several dedicated units. And, and uh, you know, when you look at the cost of cleaning the boat, you look at the time, you look at the crew, you look at the wages back home, you look at the additional wages coming back to the boat, no question. You know, I think ours might be a little lower than that. But, um, you know, a real outbreak, and if your customer really wanted to, to – to be tough and take you off the clock and yeah. it could be more. Um, I think the thing that's going to help us the most is getting this testing turned around quicker. If I got a guy that didn't feel well on the boat and I get those results back in 24 hours, that number we just discussed goes way down, I think. Yeah. So basically you and Merritt and the other operators, uh, you would continue to pay the crew if the vessels are laid up and they must go into isolation. You'll probably do that, right? Are you yeah, 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 deckhand to wheelman. Uh, if I if you're missing work because you you have the coronavirus, a crew member you're on has the with has the coronavirus, or the number of uh, examples that are listed in the Care Act, the Paycheck Protection Act, and the uh, I forget all the supplemental acts yeah. that have come out, but we're going to keep their wage whole for how many days they were due on the boat. And um, you know, if you got to get off and you're missing work because of this no fault of your own. We're going to make sure that your, your check's covered and you're not out anything. I, I guess um, one final question, Austin, this might seem like a whole nother world away because this is about what, maybe two months ago or so when um, our writer Pam Glass talked to you for the cover right. story and you had mentioned, and, and this has been a problem for years, is about hiring and training and retaining mm -hmm. qualified mariners. You know, it's very, very competitive. It's very hard. So, the one question is, have you stopped hiring and training with all this? And then I remember one thing, and then you, I think you had told Pam that if, if everything had stayed the same and everything was looking good, you would plan to give raises to your tankerman maybe later in the year just to make sure that someone else doesn't steal these people. So right. well, all this, what's happening with all this now? Good news on, on both those answers. <laughs> uh, the quick answer is yes, we're still hiring and training, and two, yes, the raises are still scheduled. Um, I think that the hiring aspect, and I've said this to a few people locally, we've actually hired more people. I have crews being paid on the sideline now to quarantine, uh, to be sure that if I have an outbreak on a boat, I have another crew on the sideline that who I know has been, being, been, been paid to be home and be safe can come to the boat and relieve that crew. Um, and yeah, I think um, as long as the market can sustain our, our current rates, we'll be happy to give those raises. I think if you start seeing rates fall, boat gets, boats getting tied up because of uh, lack of demand, uh, you're gonna see a wage, <laughs> a wage issue go the other way. But you know, I'm an optimist. I, I feel like the economy is gonna get back to normal once we get past this virus and uh, the 10 million people that are out of work and, and counting uh, come find a towboat company. Uh, if, 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 you, if, you, if you didn't like the exposure uh, that another industry gave you because of this virus, 
come working for an essential industry, we'd be happy to give you a shot. Okay, Austin. Well, well thanks for your time, and uh, and please uh, stay safe, and I hope all your employees stay safe, too. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay.